take a look at the knobs and switches available on DIG. First, we've got a mix knob for delay one. Goes from full wet, full dry, of course. The mix two knob will bring in the second delay. Repeats knob will control the repeats. The time knob sets the time for delay one and also will affect delay two's time as it stays synchronized. The time two knob sets delay two to be a subdivision synchronized to delay one. We've chosen five different subdivisions that give a variety of rhythmic and ambient effects. DIG offers three modulation settings from no modulation to light modulation to deep modulation, each voice to give a wide range of musical usefulness. With no modulation, now we add some light modulation. Now we add some deep modulation. Okay, let's explore the time divisions that are available for delay two. We have a triplet subdivision. Let's go to ADM here. So delay two is three times as fast as delay one. We've got an eighth note subdivision. We've got the golden ratio, which is denoted by the logarithmic spiral, and that will create repeats that never really stack up on top of each other. So it's great to get kind of an ambient washy reverb sound. Let's go to 12 bit and increase the modulation to deep and turn up our mix a little bit and see what kind of ambient sounds we can get. So you can see you can get a nice reverberant sound with two delays and the right you know, ratio going on there. Here we have dotted eighth interval. Let's go back to ADM for this one. And by just changing the relative mix knob, you can also really get some nice variations on that rhythmic pattern. By turning mix two up and mix one back, we'll accent the dotted eighth note. By turning down mix two a bit and turning up, we'll accent the quarter note. A lot of variation just with some simple twists of the knob there. The fifth subdivision is dotted quarter note, 
So now delay two is actually longer than delay one. In DIG we provide you with three different delay voicings, two vintage classic style and one high resolution modern delay voicing. We wanted to capture the essence of some of the first digital delays from the early 1980s. Those delays were characterized by the limitations of the A to D and D to A conversion systems of the day and by the supporting circuitry that was used to enhance the performance of those conversion systems. In the 21st century, conversion technology is about 100 times better than it was in 1980 more or less. This allows us to use the high resolution, high bandwidth conversion to capture the signal, and then we can recreate the technologies that were used 35 years ago to faithfully capture the sonic signatures that those processes produced. Our ADM delay uses adaptive delta modulation. Delta modulation is a one-bit conversion technique that was developed in the telecommunications industry for voice signals, and adaptive delta modulation increases the audio performance by jacking up the clock speed and adapting to the input signal. A characteristic of some ADM conversion algorithms is an accentuation of the attacks, leading to a percussive delay that's great for rhythmic and dynamic styles of playing. So you can hear the attack on those strikes got a percu percussive nature to it. All right, let's slow the delay down a little bit. Our 12-bit delay recreates the sonics of early 12-bit PCM digital delays. 12 bits was pretty much state-of-the-art for PCM conversion in 1980, and to maximize the delay time, sample rates were typically run at about 32 kilohertz. In PCM conversion, the relative performance is best when the signal level is large, so these delays would typically use companding systems to increase the signal level and pre-emphasis and de-emphasis equalization to reduce quantization noise. These all combine to create a digital delay that's clear but warm with a sense of dimension that's added from the companding. That's evident in listening to the 12-bit the delay here. The X2496 algorithm uses the high resolution converters running at 96 kilohertz and 24 bits to create a digital delay that faithfully recreates the input signal. We added a subtle dynamics block that allows the delayed signal to just sit underneath the dry signal while you're playing.
we've been listening to the two delays configured in series configuration, which is similar to having two stomp boxes in succession on your pedal board. We can also configure them to be in a ping pong configuration or in parallel. So let's investigate those as well. The secondary function for mix two will set the configuration. And at 12 o'clock, it sets them to be set up in a ping pong configuration. So if we listen to just delay one, we hear it bouncing left and right, delay two as well. When we put them together, there was an interesting interaction that happens. They're actually in series, but configured in a ping pong configuration. So back with a dotted eighth note rhythm, you can hear the pattern uh, bounce back and forth between the channels. And with a mono output, the delay outputs will both appear on the left output. So it's actually identical to series configuration if you're just using a mono output and don't have a stereo rig. And in parallel, the two delays are not interacting with each other. Delay one is coming out of the left channel and delay two out of the right channel. So delay one, delay two, both together. Again, with a mono setup, the two delay outputs will sum to the left channel, so you'll hear both delays coming out of that, that one channel. Many of the delays also would include a feedback filter where the voicing of the repeats would get successively filtered if desired. So we've included that as a secondary function under the mix knob. So at 12 o'clock, with a little bit of a dead zone so you don't have to be too precise with it, it is a flat response for each of the delays, and that's what we're listening to now. <laughs> As we turn it counterclockwise, we'll roll off the high end of the repeats and it'll get successively darker. At minimum, it's a one kilohertz filter in the feedback. Let's go to 12 bit, let's go back to series and turn up the repeats and listen to kind of a dark wash ambient delay here. Turn up the repeats here. Conversely, if we turn the uh, repeats filter clockwise, we will start removing the low frequencies once we get uh, past, uh, past the halfway point. So we'll hear what that sounds like. So that gives you quite a range of sounds to modify just by playing around with the, the feedback repeats filter. <laughs> 